Okay, so Michael's going to show us how to set this all up. So what do you do first, Mike? Okay, so we already have our project imported, but I'll show you how to do it. So you go to Project at the top, Import, Composer Studio Project, and then you're going to go find where your project's located, which in this case, it was located in TI, BLE, SDK, Extra, Projects, BLE, and then we're going to be importing the simple NP software handshaking. You click Code Composer Studio, you press OK, and these are the two products we already have imported. But you just press Select All. Um, you should have selected these two down here. Usually select those two, and then you just press Finish, and it'll import the project for you. Okay. So now we have this project. Let's see if we can. There's probably going to be errors. So let's see if we can view our problem. There we go. Um, uh, now, now you see there's a lot of a lot of warnings. Going on over here, if we select this, 23 warning that says, cannot find this include path. So let's see what it says. TI, so this, this is the include path that came with the, uh, the project. And so we need to update it to show what our include path was. So if we right click on our project to go to show build settings, give it some time to open. And we can go to include options, and so these these are the things that it's having trouble. Is it can't find out where this uh, TI BLE SDK base is. So we need to update that. So we go to uh, build variables, and we're gonna add our variable in here. So it was TI. Then we need to find where our path is for our, um, our base, TIBLE, SDK base. So that would be simple link. Uh, okay, so here it is. So, so you we, yeah, click right here. Yeah. So then we get our address. We go back here. We paste it in. Press OK. Let me just double check to make sure TIBLE, SDK base. Oh, I wrote it wrong. So let me edit this. So that should be. So we're gonna make it so it's the right thing. Ti underscore ble underscore sdk underscore base. Okay. So then now we're changing this to represent what uh, we have, which is this. Uh, apply it. So there you see all of that stuff went away down there. So that's fine. Um, this warning down here is totally fine because it'll go away once we're done uh, updating our project. So let's go back into build settings, include options. Now we need to update uh, this board right here to be the launch pad. So if we double click it and we go browse, there's a launch pad file we downloaded inside TA, the TI file. Uh, that's going to be in. Oh, is it in there? That's going to be in the TI real-time operating system packages, TI boards, and you just click that, and press OK. So it updates it to the launch pad. So we're we're good there. Now there's some more things we got to do. So we go to startup. We need to update this board.c file to be the launch pad.c file. So we right click it and we're gonna exclude it from our uh, from our build yep okay so now that's not gonna be in our build anymore and then we're gonna go and we're going to uh, add a file and we need to, this is gonna be adding our launch pad file so we already have it open up it's in the TI real-time operating system packages TI boards the file we were just at in the previous screen and then we actually go into the folder and we click this and it should uh, okay I think that's fine and then there you go so it's in our file that's fine um, then there's there's a few things differently that we have to change in here um, if we built it now we would get some errors uh, relating to um, board buttons because this is built initially for the evaluation model so we're going to change it so it uh, 
works for the port we're using, which is a launch pad. So if you go to simple mp.c, then we're just going to look for uh, board underscore c underscore up. Um, so okay, so here we go. We found we found this board key up bot um, thing. We're gonna we're gonna change it so that it it works for the launch pad. And there's two buttons on the launch pad. So there's board underscore button zero. And that's gonna be the button on the uh, on the left of the launch pad. And then board key down will change that to board underscore uh, button one. That's the other button. Um, and then there's also gonna be one in uh, where where is it? I think it's in here. There's another one somewhere. There we go. So we have board key up was board underscore button zero. Okay, so save this. Let's save this. Um, let's make sure we're building for, we're going to make sure we're building for the right. Um, Yeah, so the launch pad doesn't use this debug probe. It uses the XDS 110. So we just change it there. And, and this uses a 20, 2640. Yeah, 40, so, so even though it is a 2650, mm -hmm. we only have a 2640. Yeah, exactly. Right? Exactly. exactly. So you do that. Um, now, ideally, if I remembered all the steps correctly, we should be able to build this project. So let's project build all. And give it some time. Hopefully, I got it all right the first time around. Maybe. If not, we'll just go fix it. Yeah. I think there's a U on it. We're going to leave this in here and everybody can see how long it actually takes to compile. <laughs> yeah, send this to TI and don't yeah. fix it. <laughs> <laughs> fix it. Come on, fix it. Nobody wants to wait two days. It's a good thing we brought snacks. <laughs> And we'll do the same thing on the other project in terms of adding are you, variables. Are, uh, are you talking about this, this yeah, one right here? No, one. That, that one's totally fine, or okay. it should be fine. Um, we'll see if it yells at us, but I think we went through all the steps that you need to build the project. Okay. Because the workflow will be, if I had a brand new board, mm -hmm. I, would down, I would download and run the first the stack project first mm -hmm. once. Yeah, and then as I'm editing going along, I can update this 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 handshake project yep, exactly. and reflash it without having to flash through. Yeah, yep. the same way I did for this. Simple so we'll here. Yeah. Okay. There's one more thing we need to uh, yeah. to update, but that's fine. It's on the launch pad. It looks like there's only one or one set of UR pins. Okay, so let's go find this right here. So we need to change this CC twenty six fifty UART to board underscore UART. Okay. Yeah, well okay. I had to add a comma there. Yeah. So okay. And it looks like I need to update my path in here as well. So once again, go to show build settings. We're updating this TI BLE SDK base. So if we go to variables, let's just yeah, build variables, add 
DI underscore DLE underscore SDK underscore base. And then I don't know if I still have it copied, but we'll just copy our address again. Go back to code controller. Paste it in. Okay. Apply. And there we go. But and once again, you're going to have the same error down here, but that's totally fine. So let's just just clean and build it again. And we should. That should be everything. But we could be wrong. Probably again. something. There might be something. I feel like there was a board file I had to update. I don't, I don't remember. There's a lot of steps. So the basic idea, as far as I can tell, with this NPI is it, it gets uh, these packets across mm -hmm. the serial port mm -hmm. that configure and implement mm -hmm. exactly. uh, um, yeah. uh, the Bluetooth. Mm -hmm. exactly. so now, I've seen a list so of are, the, are you looking for Yeah, I'm not, I know, I know, but yeah. that, I've seen this list, mm -hmm. but now I'm going to need you know, uh, sort of best practices. Okay. Which, which function do you call first? Yeah, because there's a lot of stuff. You there. don't call them, you know, there's yeah. probably an alphabetical order or something. It's totally yeah. useless. Now yeah. I'm going to want to be able to ex execute them in some order mm -hmm. that, no, there's probably somebody's done this before. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Because there's, there's a lot of stuff on here. Yeah, a lot which, of different things you can but it, Once we're at this point, it gives the, the students, after they're done with this lab, the flexibility of the way they want. Yeah, so they can control the project, but from the TM4C side. From the TM4C side. Yeah. So they don't even have to see this. They can just use, look at all these commands, figure out how to... But even if we could produce a video, which is essentially what you just did, for the really adventurous, because mm -hmm. we, when we thought about this class, we thought, well, could we have done it with just the CC2650? Had the kids write their own operating system, and I, and then put the stack on it. And I, and I, and I contend we probably couldn't. Let me have an error here. Probably some of this project. Okay. Right, so everything's built and we're we're good to go. So. That's, uh, you want to try? Sure. How, how, how yeah, we'll, 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 see, we'll see if it works on the code yeah. composer. Yeah, we can get it to work the other way. Uh, I know it's fine. It's, <laughs> all, it's all right. So we've got nothing to lose, right? Right. All right so, so this is should be pretty blank. Yeah, it's always good to clean and build. Yeah, yeah. Because usually when, whenever I update it with or this one right here, it's supposed to update all of them. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know what happened there. Oh, boy, I would, I would presume it wouldn't update all of them. Because you could have... Sometimes it works for me. Yeah, okay, <laughs> it's different with every version, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay, so ideally you just press... Uh, well, and it, yeah, uh, so it builds again, but it's already been built. So. Mm -hmm. Two minutes. Okay, so I guess we're in. Launching. Okay. Yeah, now it's, it gives you a. Oh, yeah, th these come active over here when they. Oh, they're when they're, loading it. Yeah, okay. when they're ready to. Yeah. And there's special colors over here, and that's going. I mean, so, something, something right is happening. Well, <laughs> yeah, something right with the W. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <laughs> okay. But it must. In order for this process to work, it must use some of the ROM. It must be programming some of the ROM that doesn't get mm -hmm. erased when they program it again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? In order for this, yeah, 
It kind of reminds me of when I used Zigbee in my project where you sort of wrote those initial functions to figure out who's sending it to yep. you, then you don't have to do it again yep. whenever you boot the board up. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, we're in. So it's running. Um, that's good. So, so uh, it says that that's fine. That, that's it how did, it's supposed to be. But it did give a... Uh-oh, where is this? In my folder, number 20. Let's see if we can find that. I'm just going to assume that's... Line twenty, maybe. Nope. Where is it? 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 But you don't actually run it. this one, do you? No. So okay, then, so then we got to get out of here. Okay, so you click the run right. Okay, we're back. And let me just search. We can search this whole thing. Do a control H. We can see if there's a. Uh, no, it's zero somewhere. Okay, so then we want to build this one on the board. This, I do think we're going to be fine because uh, there is a physical mapping between these switches mm -hmm. and the switches on the TM4C because because the boosters are packed because they're two launch pads tied yeah. together. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And so, well, well, so with this project, there's two different modes you can run. You can run in power saving mode or non power saving mode. So, power saving mode uses the buttons, and if it's not power saving mode, then it just doesn't use the buttons. So, I okay. think it sets the, the ready uh, switch high saying, okay, send data, or you just send it in chirp, and then it'll send a chirp back to you automatically. Yeah, so th we could conceivably program the TM4C to, to control the buttons. Because it's it's mm -hmm. uh, whatever passive pull up down, you know, with, you know, with it's, it's an input to the processor, so yeah. we can control yeah, so that you, voltage from the mm -hmm. other processor. Yeah, so if you, we need it's to. just DIO thirteen and DIO yeah. fourteen, whatever they're. Yeah, whatever they map to on the other one. So there's thirteen and fourteen right there. But and then you have to un pull undo something, don't you? No, probably. Oh. no, no, not well, for the, oh, that's only for the LEDs. Well, for the LEDs, I would have to undo something. Okay. So yeah, and, that, and, that, and it's got a pull-out thing, so I might, from a scheme, from yeah. a kid scheme, because what if they're outputting to the liquid crystal display on the TM4C, it mm -hmm. doesn't activate the, yeah. the LED on this yeah. board. Exactly. Okay, so now you're uh, you're in main, and... Yeah, run! Hit the run button, see what happens. Okay, so now we, we're going to need we're gonna need to hook up somehow. Mm -hmm. so, that's, that's the nice thing, is no, you, no. you need like a... Uh, Go probe or something to see yeah. what's going on. Yeah, I'm gonna need to, to program. So you yeah. think it's yeah. uh, so, so the UART is on three and two, DIO three and two. I, I had it pulled up. Okay. The exact all right, so we'll go. Uh, all right, all right. That's how we uh, program the board. It's sitting there doing nothing. It's probably not it, since it doesn't. It's just, it's just waiting. It's waiting, so it's not gonna sh it's not gonna show up in Bluetooth land yeah, until I until you send a command. Ah, oh, sweet. Right. So, um, okay. Why don't a case says okay? Let me just let me just quit recording this because I'm over here. Okay. Thank you very much.